VR ports and non-VR games are a great way to get longer, fully fleshed out AAA games for us in VR without a developer needing to make a game from scratch. Here are 7 games that I think would be a great fit for VR because they all have something that would translate really well from flat to full 3D gameplay. With the PSVR 2 now launched, Sony need to make use of their big IPs and they need to make VR games with them to really get the mainstream gaming's media and players attention. A game series that I would love to come back as a VR only PSVR 2 game is Killzone. It's dark, it's gritty, it's got loads of particle effects and visceral gunfights. It's something that VR is missing right now and we already know how well using guns in virtual reality works. But if you actually look at the reloads on a lot of the guns in the game, they really would translate well into VR. You've got the revolver with a drum which is ejected then a new one slots in. We already know how well the revolvers work in VR. Open the cylinder, tilt back to empty, slot in new clip and then flick wrist to close. The pistol has got a magazine at the front not underneath. It ejects and then you slot in a new one. Push up the holder and rack a slide if needed. This front load style pistol is similar to the one in Vertigo 2 where you load a liquid canister from the front. They've got a grenade launcher and a shotgun which split apart then you load a new grenade or shells from the top. Half-Life Alex uses a shotgun that does this and it works great with you loading from the top then flick of the wrist to close. They've got a submachine gun with a drum mag at the front which also doubles as your foregrip so to reload you pull the drum off with your off hand and then you switch out a new one and your hand is already holding the foregrip making it very efficient. There's actually a real life gun called a PP Bison which works like this which is in Pavlov. They've got guns like this rifle that has got a drum on the top. You pull up a flap, grab and throw the old one out, put the new drum in, then slam down the flap. They could even use the way that Vertical 2 did drum reloads, with the assault rifle type gun where you can use the new drum to knock out the old one. They already have a bunch of unique weapons that would translate incredibly well into VR with manual reloads and each gun would feel unique and interesting to use. Sony are also missing first person shooters. All of the Sony exclusives are now third person adventure games or open world games. So I think bringing back Killzone as a VR game would allow them to test the water on Killzone and it would sell PSVR 2 headsets at the same time. Another first person shooter that would translate really well are the Metro games. These games aren't all out action with large amounts of stealth elements and limited ammo. The games take place in a post apocalyptic world where weapons are more makeshift than military grade and just like with Killzone they would work really well with VR controls. Like with this valve gun which has a side loading magazine and it's got a really large charge handle stuck out at the side similar to one of the guns in Larsenauts. Guns like the Hell Breath where you've got grippers on the side that you have to repeatedly be squeezed to charge up. You've got the Bastard Gun which has got a magazine which moves across the gun as it fires and when it's empty you pull it out and then slam in another one. The Flamethrower which has got a crank on the side that you have to use to pressurise it. The game has also got other gameplay elements which would work really well in VR like the use of a lighter to burn webs and to help you see in the dark. The flashlight that needs to be kept charged by squeezing the grips. You've also got the use of gas masks when in radiated areas and having to swap out filters. There's actually a VR game called Paradox of Hope which is heavily inspired by Metro and it's very impressive for a single developer but it would still be great to experience the full Metro games in VR. Alan Wake is a game about light and dark. It's got sections of the game where you're in the day which are focused on the story but at night the locals become possessed with a dark entity. They cannot be killed with any bullets unless you extract the darkness from them with light. The original game was released back in 2010, 13 years ago and it really was ahead of its time in many ways. The use of the lighting really hid a lot of the flaws and visuals of the games from that time period but the main element that I think would work really well for a VR game is the use of different weapons and tools that help you defeat enemies and stay alive. Your main tool is the flashlight, something that we've seen in other VR games and it's something incredibly immersive about being in a dark environment with a flashlight in your hand moving it around independently to your head. When playing the Resident Evil 2 remake with the mod I love the sections where you're holding a flashlight up going down corridors. In Alan Wake, to be able to defeat the enemies you have to shine the flashlight on the enemy to extract the darkness and you can press a button to increase the intensity of the light to make it faster. Just shining the light on them will slow them down and it gives you a chance to react and shoot. When you have a few people around you it really adds to the tension as you can only shine the light in one place at one time and I feel like this would be ramped up even more in first person and in VR frantically moving the light around as new bad guys come out of the shadows. There are other elements as well, for example there are street lights that you can get to which are checkpoints but also safe zones where the enemy can't get you and in sections of the game you have to start generators to turn on spotlights to get safe and save. 
This mechanic has already been in a VR game with Red Matter 2. You have to grab and pull a cord and pull back, then time the next pull as the meter drops into the green until the generator starts. This is actually very similar to how they work in Alan Wake. With the dial that rotates on the screen, you have to time the button presses when it's in the green. It works incredibly well in this game because it adds tension when you're trying to start the generator to get to safety and you have to hand crank like in Red Matter 2 whilst under pressure of enemies getting closer is another area where the game would become very tense. You also get things like a flare gun which becomes like a rocket launcher as it fires out and kills enemies it comes in contact with and it will also extract the darkness from the enemies that are close to the flare. You even have hand flares that you can light and then drop which buys you more time to reload the gun or put in more batteries as it stops them coming close for a short amount of time. I think they would probably need to do some rebalancing over the enemies because the game's in third person and you can see them come from behind. You also have a dodge mechanic to get out of the way. You can also reload the gun and batteries very quickly in the non-VR game with a simple button press. Having a gun in one hand and a torch in the other adds another element to the gameplay because when you have to reload in VR, you're going to have to put the torch away. There's actually a mod map for Half-Life Alyx called Belamorskaya where you're in a dark subway and you've only got a flare that you can use for light. They remove the gravity gloves, so to reload, you have to put the flare down so that you can use both hands to reload the gun, then pick the flare back up. This can make a simple act like reloading into a mini game, deciding on when to do it, and in Alan Wake, this would leave you exposed. An option to make the game a little bit more manageable would be like how Saints and Sinners torch works. So when you let go of the flashlight, it snaps onto your chest and faces forwards, so you'd still have some light, then when you've reloaded quickly, you grab the flashlight from your chest to protect yourself. They also don't use batteries in Saints and Sinners, but the flashlight can turn off, and you have to give it a shake to get it working again. This could work well in Alan Wake, as managing reloading and loading batteries into your flashlight could be a little bit too much for some players. Another game I've been playing recently that uses light well is the Plague's Tale series. You've got both Innocence and Requiem, a game's about a young girl trying to protect her brother whilst having to deal with deadly rats and soldiers. This game has got so many gameplay elements that would translate incredibly well into VR. Her main weapon is a slingshot. She loads in rocks and then swings it around above her head, then launches it at enemies. But it can also be used for environmental puzzles like breaking chains and she can also craft special ammo like being able to light torches from a distance to help get past sections of rats. She can throw rocks as distractions and in the second game she gets a crossbow which is something that works really well in VR. Having to manual load the arrow into the crossbow feels very tactile. There are also sections in the game where you get sticks that you have to light on fire and then you wave them around in front of you as you move forward to try and stop the rats from eating you. This game has got large stealth elements where you have to hide in tall grass and the slower paced gameplay would make this game suitable for most players. With aiming the slingshot you could use something like in Hitman VR where you use it offhand to effectively point at where you want to throw then you surge your hand forward to release the slingshot. The entire time I've been playing this game I've been thinking about all these different elements and how well they work in VR. It's doubtful that we'll ever see an official port but I think looking at games like this as a VR developer can help to find interesting uses for VR rather than just shooting a gun. Some people might not agree with this one, but I think that Dead Space would be a perfect port. I know it's third person, and some people think that the health bar running down the back is intrinsic to the overall game design. Personally, I think converting this to a first person VR would just intensify the incredible atmosphere this game has already got. You could move the health meter onto your arm, but one of the big gameplay elements of this game are the necromorphs, which are infected humans that mutate into all sorts of hideous monsters, and unlike other games, headshots are not the way to kill them. You have to shoot off the limbs and you use engineering tools to shoot off the arms and legs. In the non-VR game, you have a button that lets you rotate the aim either vertical or horizontal, but in VR, you would have full control of the angle of the shot with your hands using motion controls. This game also features telekinesis, where you use your offhand to effectively force grab objects and then fling them forwards by pushing your hand forward. This would obviously feel awesome in VR. A really obvious one is Bioshock. This game has got it all. Incredible atmosphere, melee combat, Multiple guns, but the star of the show are the plasmids, where you use your hands to fire a large range of plasmid attacks. The electro bolt, which fires out electricity, which is really effective when enemies are in water. Incinerate, where you get to set enemies on fire, and you can also use it to melt ice blocking your path. This game also has telekinesis, where you can move things with your hands, winter blast to freeze people and things, and cyclone, where you can throw enemies into the air. It's also an older game, so it would run great in VR. This last one is never probably going to happen, but the Forza Horizon series, in my opinion, are the best open world arcade racers. 
We've got loads of different sim racing games, but we still don't have many arcade races in VR. This is obviously a Microsoft IP. Microsoft aren't interested in VR right now, but racing games are so perfect for virtual reality. They're incredibly immersive, especially with a racing wheel, and they're actually the easiest to port because you don't need to deal with motion controls or movement. Let's hope that PSVR 2 does well and finally pushes Microsoft to support VR in the future so that this will actually be possible. And those are my picks. Let me know which games you think would translate really well into a VR game. And as always, a massive thanks to my Patreon and YouTube members for supporting the channel.